Hello and welcome back to our DCOM tutorial series. Today we are going to be continuing to talk about adding new moves. We are going to be talking about more complicated move effects and getting a little bit into how the battle script system works. So to do this, I am going to be implementing Toxic Spikes uh, pulled from the expansion into Vanilla Poke Emerald. I am not going to go over every single line of code that I added in here um, because it's not all relevant to this conversation. Some of it's a little complicated, um, but I am going to talk about the majority of things related to the battle scripts and how this works. So to begin with, we just created a normal move. We gave it a move effect like we talked about in the last video. Uh, we added a new move effect. We created a new battle script for it, um, and we will be talking about its battle script. We created, um, you know, d description, a move name, etc., a basic animation, which is kind of borked right now. It uh, poisons the player uh, in the animation, but it doesn't matter uh, for the purpose of this video. Um, so to begin with, we are going to go down to the move effect um, script that is um, related to our move effect. So when we use our move, this is what handles all of the logic um, for our move being used in the game. All of the logic is handled in this move battle script. Um, the game passes over logic to this battle script. Sometimes the battle script passes it over to other things, but it always comes back to this battle script um, until the end of the move and then the move is over. Um, so to begin with, we have our attack canceler. Um, we can look at this function if you want um, to see exactly what it does. Um, so if we look, see attack handler unable to use move, um, basically what this is doing is it's just checking if it's disobedient, if we can't use it for some reason. Um, we're, we're just checking whether or not we can use the move. Um, you can uh, you know, go into that attack handler function and add more things to it if you want. Um, the attack string, very similar, uh, very simple function. It is just uh, it is just displaying the string for the attack. Um, very simple. Um, prepare string battle string use move G battle or attacker. That's this is just the logic that displays the move um, string. So PP reduce. I'm not going to go into that function. I'm not going to go into every one of these. PP reduce reduces the PP. Very simple. Um, set toxic spikes. Now this is one that we have created ourselves. This is technically a macro. It's not a battle script command. Um, there's a reason why we're doing this, but I'll talk a little bit about creating a battle script command before I get into that. So if you are wanting to create a battle script command, essentially all you're doing is you are coming over here and you are um, you are you. you you're just creating a function up here, putting it into this table right here, um, and then you are you're going to put it at the bottom. Now, be aware there are only FF number of available battle script. This is why we use the various macros instead. Um, so you from vanilla only have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven or eight. I don't know. Um, seven or eight uh, commands that you can add to this list. Um, and then after you add it to this list, you come down and you actually create the function. You just, you know, copy one of these functions, rename it, put in all of the logic that you want to have the, the handle. Um, now you want to, you have to be aware of what you're doing when you're creating these scripts, because again, it's got to, um, it's got to pass input back to the, um, the battle scripts when we're done. So we want to increment the battle script instruction. Um, the, this um, pointer is what is telling the game where we are as we're going down this list. Um, so for these basic ones, all we have to do is move it one forward. Um, but if we have extra, um, you know, extra, uh, arguments, we have to move it further than just the singular, um, uh, the, the singular plus plus, and that depends on the size of the argument. Um, and I'll talk to about that when we cover this uh, various uh, function, but um, to begin with, like, that is the basics of adding, um, of adding a script command, but there's one more step to it. Um, we have to come to battle scripts Inc. And we have to copy one of these uh, battle scripts. Now, the ones that uh, that um, we want to copy are the ones with these byte sections. This byte matches up to the byte number um, that was in here. The byte number in the list matches to um, this battle script. So what happens is when this macro is called, it's basically just going to index that array with this number, and it's going to call the function associated with it. And this is how we line up our um, our 
arguments, um, and here we can see the size, um, a pointers are four bytes, um, so we have to increment by four bytes if we want to go past our pointer um, argument, but here we would have to increment by um, one, two, three, four, five, um, and then plus four, so nine, uh, to go past this instruction if we're not jumping. If we're jumping, the battle script pointer will be uh, just set to something entirely differently, uh, entirely different, but um, Anyway, uh, we are going to go back. That is how you that is how you create a battle script command. You have to uh, you have to create a command here, um, assign to a byte. You have to uh, put the function uh, in the battle script commands uh, file. You have to add it to the array here. Then you have to um, give it uh, you know declaration, obviously. Um, but this function does not use a battle script command. It is using just a plain macro that is linked to a different battle script command. So if we um, search set toxic spikes, we see this macro here that is added. Um, it's just it has a pointer, a four byte pointer, and then it's calling this other um, battle script command, this other macro linked to a battle script command called various. And it has this has its own um, this own uh, pointer to it. Um, or, the, or its own argument, this is not a pointer, this is a define. Um, now for our various battle script defines, they are defined, let me, I don't remember off the top of my head, um, they are defined in include constants battle script commands dot h, there's a bunch of these. Um, these are just different things that the battle system wants done that they threw under this one command and all it does is it just sees which one you've selected, which various command inside the like mega command essentially, um, and it pulls it out and it does it. So we are going to add a interaction, we're going to add a define for a separate various set toxic spikes. Um, so when we call this function, basically what it's doing is it's just calling the various code associated with this set toxic spikes various uh, defined. And this is the command various, so this is where it is right here. It's just, it just pulls out the gactive battler so it knows which one's active. And this is just all of the code for the other various commands in the game. Now we scroll down to our various command. Now what we are going to do, we are going to check, because um, we're setting the toxic spikes in this various command, we're going to check the G side timers. This is uh, a struct that holds some information about different things that are happening across multiple turns. Um, and we've added a toxic spike timer to it. Um, I guess I can go to the uh, timer real quick. Um, so we added a toxic spikes amount timer to this struct. So now our um, our timers, this this uh, this g side timers it has two of these structs for each side um, and we are checking the target side because we are trying to um, uh, we're trying to index which uh, we're trying to see whether or not the target has toxic spikes already so we're checking to see if the target's toxic spike is greater than two already if it is we are skipping over um, we're skipping over this data um, where we're not uh, where we're, we're getting rid of it where uh, moving to the buffer battle script, whatever, it's it's just, but it failed, because um, we already have uh, it done. Um, that's what this current instruction is being set to. It's reading the pointer from the previous current instruction plus three. So basically this is just a way of moving the battle script uh, outside of uh, just plusing the three to begin with. Um, and here, if, if we have not, if, if toxic spikes is not already set, sorry, I'm rambling a bit because some of this stuff is a little confusing for me as well. Uh, I haven't looked at toxic spikes in a while, even though I implemented it uh, the other day. Uh, and by the other day, I mean multiple months ago. So the G side timers is going to be at plus plus. Um, so we're going to have toxic spikes amount is going to happen. Um, Oh, I guess toxic spike stacks. That's why I've been confused. Um, so you can stack toxic spikes multiple times to make the toxic damage higher. Um, so we're going to add toxic spikes once, um, and we are going to G side statuses. This is another um, another two different sides of the the field, but this is just a um, a two byte like uh, bit uh, field that we're just uh, we're just. Uh, oring a uh, a bit to it basically this is one 
uh, left left 10, which is just, a, this is just a bit that is being stored that's saying that we have toxic spikes set on this side. Um, and we added that in the same way I added the timers. I'm not going to show that. Um, but you, you can, you know, look at this, where this define is set. It's not important to this. Then we're going to increment the instruction plus seven. This is moving past all of the, we don't want to go to the skip stuff because if we look um, here, we, we were, oh, I guess it's actually here we have this but it failed here we want to skip past all of this stuff so we're skipping not just uh this but it's failed stuff we're, we're skipping from here past all of this and then also past the rest of this to the attack animation now we're back to normal battle script commands um here this is this is just a plain attack animation command you're not going to edit this if you want an animation to play for your move after you know your move has successfully hit after you know it's landed which is what our set toxic spike calculates um and also the attack canceler also calculates um, we attack animation weight animation print string string id poison spike scattered now printing strings is pretty simple um we it's a it, it's its own you know function we just looked at it um but we can go to where are the battle string ids include constants battle string ids we add um, a bunch of string ids um, for our strings make sure to increase the count as well um, and then we are going into battle messages source battle message dot c we add our strings uh here we can just copy them from above there's a bunch up here um, we add our strings um, and then we scroll down in this g battle strings table and we just create new entries at the bottom of the table um, to match our string ids and our new string names that we just created and that's going to handle all of the new strings for our um our new move um, so if we go back to our move, we are wait message, wait time long, G battle script move end. Now that's setting toxic spikes. That's all of the battle script command for setting toxic spikes. But there is more, obviously, because more happens with toxic spikes than just it being set. So we have three more commands: battle script toxic spikes absorbed, battle script toxic spikes poisoned, battle script toxic spikes free. So first we are going to look at poison. This is going to be the script the script that is ran uh when we when a mon switches in um so now with these battle scripts like i said they're connected there's one connected to every effect but we also can add a bunch of other ones that are called from c that that battle script pointer that instruction pointer can be changed um to uh, uh to use any of these other battle scripts that we have added so first for the C code to see it, we need to go to include battle scripts.h and add entries. We need to extern our um, battle scripts. These are just the names of the battle scripts. We need to extern them uh, so that the rest of our code can see these battle scripts and, and call them, um, can set them like it's just basically seeing uh, seeing the pointer to it. Um, so here we have in command switch in effects. So this is the battle script command that handles the switching in of the Pokemon, which is obviously very important to toxic spikes. Um, so we have this whole section of code um, that we have copied in from the expansion um, that handles the toxic spikes um, switch in effect. So basically this, it starts out, it's checking the side statuses, seeing if there's already toxic spikes being damaged to the person who switched in, seeing if they have uh, already had the toxic, seeing if they do have the um, side status, and then here is seeing if they're flying or not, or they're levitating because toxic spikes doesn't affect Pokemon that aren't grounded. Um, here we are setting the toxic spikes damage flag to uh, this side statuses, so we have damaged the side um, of the Pokemon. We are checking to see if the Pokemon is poison type, because if they are poison type, then they do not take damage from it. They absorb the toxic spikes. Um, now this right here is our first uh, our first example. So we have G side statuses. We are not. We are and equals not side status. What this does is it clears the bit. It's an and does is you know if one and one are true then it outputs one. If zero and one are true it outputs zero. If one and zero then it outputs zero. If zero and zero it outputs zero. It only outputs true if one and one. So we are nodding uh we are nodding the toxic spikes amount so that it is um it is not true here 
So this is just uh, the like it's basically just flipping this bit field, um, and it's and what this does is it keeps any of the other bits. So instead of this only being one bit here, it's it's a zero through sixteen, but it's uh, of bits. It's one 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 where ten is zero one 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 one. And what that does when it's anded with this whole G side status is uh, like bit field, this two byte bit field, is it's just keeping everything except where that zero is. Is, which is at our toxic spikes position and then it's always going to clear it no matter what if it's set it's cleared if it's cleared already it's cleared um so that is just how you do that with a bit field i probably shouldn't get into that much detail um when that's not what this video is about basic c is not what this video is about if you are messing with these complicated uh battle instructions battle script commands and you do not understand basic c you're going to struggle i do not recommend it i recommend watching a lot of videos on c looking at cs50 uh it's a online series that you can watch to learn c um do not mess with this if you do not understand at least basic c so we continue on we set the toxic spikes amount to zero um because they absorb the spikes we push the cursor and then we're setting it to, um, we have to push it beforehand, um, and then we are setting it to the toxic spikes absorbed battle script. And what this does is it just um, immediately, once this function is returned from, it goes and it creates, uh, it, it runs this command right here. And it, all this does is it prints that the spikes were absorbed, it waits a second, and then it returns. And that's it, because nothing happens at that point if the toxic spikes have been absorbed. Um, so if the toxic spikes aren't absorbed, if they're not a poison type, then we're going to continue on. We are going to uh, check to see if there's any statuses already on the Pokemon, because obviously we can't poison the Pokemon if they've already had a status. Uh, we check their type to make sure they're not steel. Steel types are immune, immune to poisoning. I check safeguard, blah, 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 blah. Then we are checking the timers to make sure it's not uh, to make to see if it's greater than or equal to two. If it is, then uh, we are using toxic poison instead of normal poison. Like I said, uh, this move uh, stacks. So if you've used it multiple times, then uh, it uses toxic poison instead of normal poison. Um, then we are going to call this function that is basically going to. Uh, it's just going to set the data. This is a function that is used uh, to set uh, mon data while in the battle controller. Um, so we are requesting the status of the battler, um, and we are setting it with the, uh, we are setting it, uh, with the status of the poison. Um, so we are, that's what we just set right here, um, and we are emitting that set data to the battle controller saying, hey, we just did this. Mark battler controller for controller execution, that's exactly what, uh, is just going to execute this uh, stuff that we just set up for the battle controller. Then we are going to um, set uh, the script battler equal to the G active battler. This has to do with the battle controller, I believe. Um, sorry if this is a bit hand wavy. I haven't actually looked into what any of these functions do. Um, I know generally what a lot of this stuff is doing, like the G side status is checking, checking the battle mons to see what their statuses are, their types, their uh, whether they're flying or not but some of this specific battle controller stuff is beyond me i do not even care to look into it because i don't really like the battle system that much to begin with but that's neither here nor there at this point we are pushing the battle script cursor and we are setting toxic spikes poisoned so this jumps back into our script print string toxic spikes poisoned wait message wait long time status animation update status icon battle script um scripting now this is obviously related to what we were just looking at uh with the battle scripting battler and marking the battler script for controller execution i believe at least um that is updating the status icon handling it this is just its own script you can look at the command for it if you want to um wait state we wait for everything to be finished and then we return very basic battle script um battle script toxic spikes free 
Um, now this is what is going to be called after the toxic sprites um, has been freed. Um, this only happens in at least this vanilla implementation uh, when rapid spin is used. There's also defog in uh, the expansion and maybe other uh, things that I'm not thinking of. Um, basically what this is doing is when someone uses rapid spin, uh, this command is called and we're going to go through, we're going to check to see if static toxic spikes has been set. If it has been set, we're going to clear it. We're going to set the G-side timers to have no toxic spikes amount. We're going to push the battle script cursor, and then we are going to play the battle script's toxic spike free. Um, now, I think, I remember why we're pushing the cursor now. Um, so we're pushing the cursor because we're returning. Um, instead of just setting it directly um, where we want the script execution to continue on from there and not ever return back, we want to return back um, so that the um, cursor instruction is, uh, it's going to return to before um, what was going on beforehand, back to where this rapid spin free setup uh, happened. Um, so we need to make sure to uh, push the instruction and then we are going to, when, when, then when we call it, it returns here and then it returns here to wherever this is called. Um, who even knows where this is called? This is called here, uh, which is called from the move effect, which is called from set move effect, and it doesn't matter. I'm getting, I, we are getting way too into uh, what is not important to our move that we just created. So from there, I believe we have covered everything for setting up this move. So we can uh, quickly go into a battle uh, and we can test out our move. We're going to lay down toxic spikes. Like I said, I messed up the animation. It's poisoning the wrong person. We saw the text print there. We're just going to quickly aqua tail. And then it poisons. Full worm pull is hurt by poison. Um, and, you know, toxic spike works. We have toxic spikes implemented in our game. We've talked a bit about how battle script commands worked. Um, we've talked a bit about how... Um, some of the uh, how the various uh, battle script command works specifically. We've talked um, about some of the other um, things that are handled when creating battle script effects. Um, you know, this is a very complicated topic. So if you don't understand from the beginning, uh, you've a lot of what I've said has gone over your head. Uh, you just need practice working within the system. You need to read all of these battle scripts. These are all of the scripts available to you. Like with Pori script and the regular scripting language, um, how there's the macro.inc file that has all of the macros available to you. That's what this list is. Um, and I guess technically, uh, actually, that's what this list is. ASM macros battle script dot inc. This is all of the commands that you have available to you, all of the direct script commands and all of the macros that are created using script commands um, or using various commands. Um, and these are all invaluable resources. Read through all of the battle scripts. Uh, read through the ones related to things that you might want to be changing uh, to see how um, the uh, you know, developers did it. Also read through what the expansion uh, developers did to create new battle scripts, to create new various effects, to create new uh, move effects, um, because that is uh, where the bulk of, uh, you know, they've implemented, what, 900 moves? I have no idea how many moves are up to Gen 8 and a half, however many they have. It's 500, 600, something, an, an obscene amount of moves. Um, if they haven't covered something similar to the move you're trying to create, I would be shocked. Um, there's probably bits and pieces of different moves that you can piece together their effects um, to create your own battle script, to create your own battle effects, and uh, the other you know code that handles the battles. Um, so from there, I don't think I have much more to add. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below. But again, if they're complicated, make sure to join the Discord because it's a lot easier um, to you know answer your questions and help you out. Um, I also recommend joining the Expansion Discord because that has the highest concentration of people who have added move effects and specifically complicated ones. Um, other than that, I will see you on the next video. You guys have a good one.